Hello, citizens of Earth. <laughs> hey, we didn't say, hey guys, again. Hey it was guys. a very concerted effort on our part. Um, but today we're excited to have you guys with us. I'm John. I'm Mindy, here at Rodenzo Radar. Yep, and today we got some pretty cool stuff to show you. Yeah. Um, last week, if you saw our video, it was going over the concept of what a motherboard is, whether it's a computer motherboard that stuff plugs into, or whether it's a motherboard for a radar detector that everything else will plugs into. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about how people were surprised that we could develop software for Thea, even though we didn't have the hardware done. So we wanted to give you kind of an idea how we did that. Yeah. Today, we actually have the motherboard from Thea here. Now, to be fair, this is, this is a prototype, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. But what we're going to show you is the actual hardware that we'll be shipping in Thea, the same size, the same stuff. It, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so it, it's... Um it's interesting, going from the, the generic, so uh, we've been calling it motherboard, uh, that we showed last mm -hmm. week to the first prototype here. One of the big questions we've been getting is, um, you know, what components did we select and how does it compare in size? People are picturing this big, massive computer on their windshield, and that's not the case. Um, we really wanted to, you know, kind of dive into deeper into the components and also give size for com uh, comparison for size. Um, so if you take a look at Thea here, um, you can see that we that was a very unceremonious I know, un I'm unveiling. Go pick no, but it. This, yeah. this is the motherboard. Um, and let us on the base here. There's actually a black acrylic platform that it's sitting on that is surely just for display reasons. It's not Correct. part of the detector. Um, and in size comparison, you can see here's an iPhone 11 Max, whatever you call it, um, for the length of it. It's pretty. Th Pretty similar. Uh, Thea is going to be a little yeah, bit a couple shorter. Centimet couple centimeters shorter, it looks like. And then from <coughs> you know a width perspective, it's pretty much dead on, actually. And just for another comparison, this is a Pixel 4 XL. And if you see, the Pixel is substantially longer than Thea. Um, you've got at least a couple of centimeters there. So we know people have asked us about the size and asked us to do comparisons. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to just show you this. And this detector is going to be almost exactly the same size as the Max 360. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's tracking to be a little bit narrower, <coughs> and maybe a millimeter, maybe two millimeters longer at most. But it's going to be almost exactly the same Similar size. Similar ballpark, at least. Yep. <coughs> um, cool. So you were talking about this being the first prototype mm -hmm. versus the generic green version that we saw last week. Um, what happens now that once this first prototype lands here? Yeah, that's actually a really great question. So there's a, actually a term for the process of taking a fresh circuit board right off the, the batch or right off the oven, you could say, and uh, turning it into a functional product. And we call that board bring up. <laughs> so designing a circuit board is a really complicated thing. Um, there is thousands of traces or conductive paths that goes all through this that connect everything. So the Wi-Fi has to be connected to certain places. And there's these reference documents that every single chip on here has. And they tell the engineer how to connect things to make them work. Um, and it's, in it's incredibly complicated. Yeah, <coughs> a lot of pieces that need to work perfectly together. Yeah, and I mean, even, even this uh, SODIMM alone, the CPU, there's 200, I think 200 and something little pins here, and every single one of those has to go to a very specific place on the circuit board. Oh. Um, there's crazy. a lot of math involved, <laughs> and things go wrong, is I guess where I'm getting at. It's impossible <coughs> to build something this complicated. Perfectly the first time. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's just <coughs> impossible. We're not robots. We are human beings, yep. right? <laughs> so we have a really, really talented engineer here, and what he'll do when a new circuit board comes in that he designs is he'll method, how do you, how do you say that word? Method, method, method methodologically. <laughs> Something like that. He'll go through very carefully. Methodically. Methodically, yes. There we go. We got this. He will methodically <laughs> go through um, the circuit board and check. Is everything working right? Is it shorted out? And he'll find where the errors are. And that's actually why you can see some wires, some hand-soldered wires hanging off of this. Those are mistakes that we discovered. Um, and then he'll take notes, like application notes, and then send them back mm. to the company that actually made the board, and just go back and forth until everything's perfect. Mm. Can you talk about like how many, so let's call it a thousand touch points here that sure. he is checking. Um, Percentage-wise, how correct was he on the first try? This, this is actually pretty good. Um, I would say 98%. Wow. I think we only had <laughs> a few revisions that we needed to do. There was uh, something with the, the USB-C power supply, mm -hmm. and then um, getting the GPS working, we had to fix something. But I think that was pretty much it. I That's mean, incredible. Yeah, everything was routed correctly for, this, for the CPU uh, the first time. 
So it's kind of neat. I mean, we can honestly say that we've got everything working on this prototype. This is this is fixed right now. We're just waiting on the uh, actual manufacturer to come back with the second revision of them. But this is Thea. It's, it's she's alive. I guess you could alive. say. Alive. Yeah. <coughs> So let's talk about uh, components, right? This is being the first prototype. Um, we've talked about you know, the items that we selected for use inside Thea um, based on a lot of the feature requests that we've heard over the years and also especially the last few months since we announced Thea. Um, so you want to talk into about some of the components? Yeah, so the motherboard contains everything user-facing. Mama! <laughs> what I mean by that is uh, it's where the display plugs into, right? It's where your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and GPS and mm -hmm. I don't know what else is in there. I'm forgetting. Uh, Bluetooth, uh, uh, audio stuff. Oh yeah. Yep. Microphone. Yep. Microphone jack, which is a first. <coughs> we'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, so anything that you're going to be interacting with, as well as all of the RF front end stuff, the the radar horn, the circuitry inside there, that's all going to plug into here as well. So um, it's kind of neat to notice that. Right now, this is an empty motherboard. There's nothing inside of it. And this mm -hmm. is where that modular uh, concept comes in. This is the CPU where Ray lives. And this actually just slots into here exactly like adding computer memory would. Yeah. Um, hence, that's why they call it a SODIMM. So it, it's, it's kind of neat that the actual processor of, of Thea, the brain of, of Ray, uh, just kind of lives on that SODIMM and slots right in. Yeah, brilliant. So We've decided to bring radar detectors out of the Stone Age, right? I mean, why not RJ11? Yeah. What are you doing to us, John? It's like literally, you know. It's true. <laughs> a lot of people are complaining about that, but it is uh, necessary. And the reason for that is because this is a computer. It's not a radar detector. This can draw. <coughs> um, we're specking our power uh, consumption for a maximum of three amps. An RJ jack <coughs> isn't capable of doing that. The actual physical jack itself isn't rated for that, or I think it's right about that. But the wires inside are so small that they can't carry that kind of current. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and if we're going to put a USB-C port on here for power, it just makes sense to put data as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you choose not to use a Wi-Fi, you can um, yeah. you know, use USB-C for updating. And, and it's, it's what people expect. I mean, your cell phones, USB-C, yeah. everything's moving to USB-C. A lot of new cars come with USB-C power ports. so. Mm -hmm. We thought that made sense. Yeah. Um, one neat thing to note about this is that we decided to make access to that USB bus open. So I know we've talked about being open source, um, and obviously we're doing that, but we want to make getting access <coughs> to I.O., or in and out for data, as yeah. they call it, really easy with this detector. So if somebody is a talented developer or a hacker at home, they'll be able to have access to that USB port and extend it. I mean, if maybe you want to hook an ADSB. Uh, radio up to it to get notification from uh, the overhead aircraft. Overhead, yeah, yeah. you got a ticket from one of them. It was actually was that your first day on the literally your first, first day, day on the job. I got first a Vascar ticket. You got a Vascar ticket in Ohio. I love Ohio. Yeah, I thought it was one of the Redenso <laughs> detectors that let her down. No, and I was like, great. I I asked her to come here and told her how great our products are, and then she gets a ticket on the way. But it was Vascar. <coughs> yeah, but that's real life, right? Like, a, if you live in an area where you know they patrol, Ohio is. Notorious, especially yep. on my uh, actually on my commute on the um, outside uh, parameter of the city. There's constant Vascar. Yeah, so that's <coughs> that's just an example of something that we're not going to ship at launch. Like we can't support that at launch because yeah. it's there's a million different types of radios and yeah. everything. But somebody could plug it in and figure out how to write drivers for that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the USB C. Okay. So looking at some of the other hardware that's on here. Um, what happens when a sing signal comes into the detector through the horn? How does it get to, from, you know, through the horn a actually B, into right? Ray? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So we've uh, we put a lot of thought into that, and we have a very specialized connector here. Um, the brand is Samtech, so we just call it the Samtech connector. Really original, I know. Um, <laughs> but they they make specialized high performance connectors for both analog and digital. So when the horn module sits on top and a signal comes in, it passes it into this connector, then it gets sent to Ray, and then everything else can talk to it from there. Um, one also kind of cool thing is, again, if, if somebody, like I'm not going to hide what model connector that is. If somebody yeah. wants to develop a different type of board instead of RF to plug into the Santa connector, cool, go ahead. Not, I don't care. The world is your oyster. Exactly. <coughs> awesome. So. Uh, taking a look at um, some of the features that we've, you know, uh, really wanted, just not just here at home base, but out in the field. 
uh, a lot of motorcycle riders, right? A bunch yep. of us ride here, um, and I know you don't, but <coughs> this is a big deal for us. And you know, putting the uh, headphone jack, and I think you said it's the first detector with a headphone I jack. I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys can fact check me on that, but I think this is the first time ever that we've had audio in capability yeah. on a radar detector. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so what other uh, mindset or idea did you have with the microphone? Well, this. Or the headset. inclusion of a headphone jack in general is an example of um, you guys changing my mind and you. Mm -hmm. So as many said, I don't ride a motorcycle. The reason I don't is because I would get killed. There's no question about it. I would Probably. wind up embedded in the back of a semi truck at 150 miles per hour. Uh, so that's why I don't ride, but she does. Okay. And everybody was mm -hmm. complaining about the lack of headphone jacks on mm -hmm. the current detectors that we have. Um, I like the minimal look and feel kind of a, of a product, so I wasn't going to include it, but we had enough people online ask for it where I decided to do it. So thank you, congratulations, you changed my mind. Now, when we put that jack in, we said, why stop there? If we're going to do it, let's, let's go, go all the way. Home, exactly. Yeah. <coughs> so we actually put a combination microphone and headset jack, and the reason behind that is we are moving into a connected world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you walk into like, I don't know, Best Buy or another store, they sell refrigerators that are connected. They sell coffee pots that are connected. Literally everything. Robots that mop your floor. I mean. But what is the one thing that you can't have Alexa integrated to or use voice control on? It's your radar detector. These yeah. things are old fashioned. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of interesting things that even if, again, we don't think of how to do the software at launch, a clever idea could come a year down the road mm -hmm. and the hardware is there to support it. That's huge. Like, how often does that happen in engineering? Yeah, we're, we're spending extra money just to, to yeah. future-proof this. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I can think of all kinds of, of audio features that would require a microphone. Mm -hmm. How cool would it be if you turn up your, your car stereo and the ambient noise level rises, if the detector could hear that and then auto-adjust auto <coughs> the volume, right? Yeah. So it's just little things like that, trying to have that philosophy of building hardware for the future. So that's why we put a microphone jack on there. I love it. Cool. So let's, let's talk a little bit about um, the wireless connectivity because that was, I mentioned we had to fix the GPS yeah. and the GPS is something that I'm pretty proud of on here. Um, do, you know what a, do you know what a hurt is, men? It's mm -hmm. so like you've heard the term one hertz GPS or <laughs> 10 hertz GPS. If it's what does 10 that hertz, mean? it hurts more than one hertz. That's right. How, how much more? <laughs> 10, 10 times. times. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a hurt is just the update rate. Yeah. And so most GPSs update, uh, like your phone, right? Example, yep. it's going to be one hertz per second, right? Correct. And I think, if I remember correctly, we decided to go with a 10 hertz um, yeah. GPS antenna for a multitude of reasons. Yeah, and I mean, when like when you go to the track right. and you buy a Harry's Lap Timer dongle or like yep. an AIM Solo, AIM Smarty Cam, yep. those all use 10 hertz GPSs. You're right, because exa example, like mid Ohio 153.6. That's a big difference if you did one, you know, 57.5 the week it before. Doesn't, it doesn't sound like <laughs> it, but that's a big difference. Yeah, that's, that's the difference between being tied when you come around the track versus yeah. being 2,000 feet behind. Or quarter mile times, anybody who's running quarter mile, you know, the difference between, you know, 11.7 and 11.9 is, yep. that's a big deal, big deal. And our philosophy with this detector in general is overkill, just mm -hmm. to make a statement. And we extended that to our wireless connectivity as well. One thing that's unique on this detector is that we actually chose to use um, premium chipsets that use external antennas. Now, I don't mean external outside of Thea's metal case, but I do mean that this, for example, this GPS antenna right here, this plugs into a real antenna port. It's a real RF antenna port. Hmm. And what that lets us do is take this antenna and route it and put it on top of the horn so it has a perfect oh. view of the sky. <coughs> Versus being buried underneath something Ex else. In exactly. The, okay. um, cool. So we can literally design it to have the best signal possible. These external antennas also have much higher gain than the antennas that tend to be built into the GPS chipsets. And we've done that with wireless as well. Um, one thing to note with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the final version will have an external antenna just like this. Uh, when you look at this circuit board, this one does not just because uh, they didn't have it in stock. So when you build a prototype like this, we're not ordering 10,000 of these at a time. We're building one <coughs> at a time. So every single component on here, each little headphone jack and microchip, we have to order from like a kind of like an Amazon version of a web store that would carry this. We yeah. use DigiKey and Mouser <coughs> mostly. 
Um, so they just didn't have the one in stock with the external antenna, so we just use the exact same chipset <coughs> just yeah. with the internal saves antenna. saves 15 weeks of waiting on Exactly. Uh, Otherwise, the whole project would have been pushed back. Yeah. So just something to note. That's really cool. Yeah. Modcat. What else do we have in here that we didn't talk about? We got audio, we got Wi-Fi, connectivity. Uh, there's, there's some other ports on here that you'll see. Nothing exciting. I mean, you have a front display connector, stuff like that. Um, I, I know we'll talk about it, I'm sure, in future videos, but from a d display perspective, um, people have been asking left-hand drive, right-hand drive. Are the right-hand drive folks going to get hornswoggled and, you know, That's true, yeah. you know, lose out on features or, you know, usability because of that? And just since we're talking about the connector, yeah. um, maybe just shed some light on that. Yeah, so that won't be a problem. We're definitely sensitive to that. This is not going to be a detector like the Valentine one that has a canted front end. Where or the it's R7 kinda where it's angled. Or the R7, yeah. yeah. Um, this is going to be a straight-on a straight on design and the way that we're doing our user interface uh, you actually won't have to flip the detector in order to use it equally well on both what? sides yeah it's crazy um th we see a big international market for this especially with the camera performance that this has um so we are we made sure that we weren't just thinking about united states customers for that love it smart cool um laser that's what we we're forgetting about laser they're driving me nuts for like <coughs> five minutes um oh, gps wi-fi and laser so I'll intro it. Yeah. Okay. So Susie Stompers. Um, one of the questions has been, okay, so this is a radar detector. Uh, and there's a lot of you know talk about laser detection and radar detectors and so on and so forth. Um, but we do believe it's important to you know be notified that you're going to get a ticket. So yeah, <laughs> we have put in. Uh, we are integrating with laser detection. Do you want to talk about the diode up front? Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is something that we're tweaking still from a mechanical standpoint, trying to get better performance. So I mean, laser works. Like it works pretty much like any other detector right now. The circuit that we used here is actually based on the um, detection from the No Photo, mm -hmm. which is an earlier product that we did. It uses the same type of light to infrared hmm. um, that the police laser guns use. Uh, we are finding that mechanical lens performance has a pretty big impact yeah. on sensitivity, so we continue to play with that, but I would say the circuit overall is done. We did actually hook up, um, no promises here, but we did hook up electrically this laser circuit with something called a counter that's inside the CPU, and what that means is that the potential will be there um, even if it's not ready at launch necessarily, to count pulses of, of laser received, kind of with the idea being that in the future we could tell you the name of the laser gun. I'm not sure if it's going to be done at launch because just in full honesty, I am putting less attention into laser performance than I am radar performance right now because we're on a timeline. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we're trying to build that capability in there for the future. That's awesome. Very smart. Yeah. Think of everything, don't they? Yeah. So I think that pretty much covers um, the first revision of the Thea motherboard. We'll try to keep you guys in the loop, and um, as I said, come along for the journey with us as we get closer and closer to production. Yeah. Um, make sure that you click subscribe, because again, we, we want to keep talking to you, and now is the time if you guys have feature suggestions or questions, comments, criticism. Two months from now will be too late. It'll be way right? too late, yeah. yeah. We, we need to hear it now. Yeah. Um, just like you change my mind on the microphone, maybe you'll change, or headphone jack, maybe you'll change my mind on something else. Love it. So, cool. yeah. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye. Can you read my writing? Mm, no. <laughs> my opening line doesn't feel as spontaneous as it did last Hello, time. Hello, humans. I'm going to say the same thing, but it's like, it was a first time thing. Now you have to fake a forced laugh. Ha 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 ha. Did you mute your phone? Ha, gotcha. It is muted. Damn it.